Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace to the rest of you again. Blackheart, sign of black in, asking you to hit that share button and thanking you if you have hit share or like or subscribe, but definitely if you have hit the share button because that's where we benefit. And the message is more important than the messenger. I've said before that I'm going to go in on men. I mean, I'm going to go in on women on this channel to a certain extent, meaning the Western women. And that there is a reason I'm not going to go in on men on this channel. There are things we've done wrong. Usually they've been out of ignorance. And these are things that I can address <clears throat> commonly in person when talking to men. Whereas when it comes to women, in the West, we have to deal with not only the dysgenic preferences they have, um, but also the, um, the lying and the deception about it. This is why I oftentimes refer to the average Western woman as, uh, average Western women as wicked witches of the West. Now, um, In the actual movie, Alice in Wonderland, I don't remember if the Wicked Witch was the one from the East or the West. I don't care. <laughs> These are Wicked wickes, Witches from the West that I'm talking about. The morally upright and honest Western women aren't the enemy. Unfortunately, they are other victims, and they're not victimizing, and this tells me what's going on. What is the general consensus um, also, there are many of the innocent ones that know about the guilt of the guilty, and while not doing the same things, they will defend the ones who do them, much like I have students who study and they don't cheat. But you know what they do? They defend those who do cheat. They defend lazy students, and I have to get on their case. This tells you about a society. You can tell when a society is uh, in serious trouble and their future is in jeopardy, usually when the innocent cannot point the finger at the guilty, but the guilty can point their fingers and blame the innocent or mock the innocent. Now, I had a discussion with my students early today. We were joking. Um, one student thought that I had traveled to Malaysia with my wife and my daughter not understanding that my daughters are older and that my wife doesn't have daughters. Uh, she and I are pretty much beyond, we're, we're beyond parenting years anyway. That's okay with me. That's fine. The fact that she's beyond um, childbearing years is, um, is not a problem with me. I don't mind it, but I understand that many other men don't prefer this and they have that right. Especially when they don't have children and they're looking to have them. They should not have to settle for only raising other men's kids. Now, one of my students thought so and I told him, wait, okay, that baby you saw in the video that's high-fiving my wife and high-fiving me is my friend's baby girl. That's not mine mine are older and so then he said uh, the oldest one can I marry her and this student has no black ancestry that we know of and I said to him well if you can prove that you've got black ancestry then we can discuss it <laughs> but you might be a little bit too light skinned for her taste but doctor you have white ancestry and you're not dark, yeah, but I'm her dad. I'm not going to marry her. And it was a joke, but then somebody said, wait, that's racist. And I had to stop and say, hold up. Who the hell said that? No one answered. I said, no, wait, wait, who, who came up with this idea that that's racist? And someone else said, well, I mean, in Islam, you can't do that. And I said, well, hold up. See, let's, let's, let's understand something right here right quick. Even though he's joking, it is true that you have to have black ancestry if you want to marry one of my daughters. And you have to know about this. 
you have to identify yourself as a black descendant. The only exception is the men coming from the archipelago, meaning from Malaysia and Indonesia, or maybe a southern Filipino who's also Muslim. Now, what's the reason for that? The reason is they don't have problems with us. They know that we're equal, and we, they know that because when we marry their women, they never trip because one of us is black. That's a question that is never asked of any of their women that marry us. No one comes and asks the woman, why did you marry this foreigner, or why did you marry this black man? Neither of those ever becomes questions. However, if I married one of your women, one of your relatives, someone's going to come to her parents and her and ask, why did you agree to a marriage with this foreigner and he's black too? Even if they don't hate black people, they're going to ask that question. And I've already been told that I could actually marry a citizen of this country as long as she's black. It would be easier. But if she's not black, chances are she would not agree. The higher chances are that her parents would not agree. <laughs> if this is how you niggas think, then God damn it, you don't have the right to call me a racist because I put you through the same categories and I hold you to the same standards. The reasons that are valid for you to say that I cannot marry your aunt who might be even be a widow that no one else will marry is a valid reason for me to say that you niggas can't come to me and ask me about marrying my daughter. One of them said, what happens if your daughter comes to you and she wants to marry a white man? And I told her, I'm going to whoop both of them, but I'm going to whoop her first because she knows the drill. This is self-defense. This is not racism. You niggas don't have a safety reason or a safety concern when you bar marriages between your own tribes, let alone when uh, you bar marriages between someone that's black and someone that's not black. It's not a safety concern. No one's going to shoot you or harm your kids from the other family because your kids are black <laughs> or your grandkids. No one's going to do that. Not here. It's just a social thing. You don't want it because you see it as a stigma and a shame. And this actually makes you inferior. We don't think this way. We simply want to be safe. So I'm not going to have my daughters have kids with somebody that comes from a culture that does not appreciate blackness and have those kids be at risk when they go to visit the other side of their family. That's not happening. I'm not putting my, uh, my, my girls at that risk. I'm not putting my son at risk of that. See, we're even with this thing. My son would rather marry someone from Southeastern Asia, and I'll look for him when he's ready. My daughters are going to marry someone that is black or someone from Southeastern Asia, and of course the requirement is that they be Muslim as well. Because racism's not going to come from their family either. You niggas coming to me and asking me about marrying my daughters, what am I going to do to protect them from your uncle or your aunt that might not approve of an interracial marriage even if he doesn't hate black people? Why should my grandkids have to listen to any of your backwards relatives, better ones, talk about, oh, you're pretty, even though you're black? What do you mean, even though you're black? Who said white is always pretty or that white is always prettier than black? And where did you niggas get this from if you're not even white? You just call yourselves that and real white folks laugh at you about it and we laugh with them. And this is the only thing about which we share laughs with them and agree with them on that you confuse niggas are not white. Otherwise, I wouldn't have to call you niggas. Black women, I rarely address you directly in this, but I'm going to address you this time. You need to understand what, what I've said before previously. Black men do not leave you with passports because you're black, because your hair's kinky, because your nose is wide, because your lips is, are big, and because you have melanin. That's not why. I've seen it with my own two eyes and these private groups on FB that are for men with passports, black men with passports. They go abroad. I saw it a little while ago, actually, on one of the pages. One man was talking about, I love Bogota. I haven't been to Medellin yet. I love Bogota. So far, I heard that Medellin is, is you know, what's even better. Is that true? And one of the guys underneath looked at his photographs and said, where are the sisters at? Now, this is an SYSBM group, even if they don't use the acronym or the hashtag. This is actually quite common. Another man is in Ghana and he posts up pictures of the Ghanaian women he's with. Another one goes to Uganda 
And he's like, where are the Ugandan women that actually like African-American men? Where, they, where do they hang out at? Y'all let me know. Black men still prefer black women. However, it is you black Western women that have driven them away. But because you were talking about swirling now, let me explain this to you about the swirling. And no, these are not the same. If we do go to Germany and, and dig out some of the frows, that's still better than when you decide you're going to swirl even in, the, um, even in the United States, if that's where you live, or the UK. And I'm going to tell you why. You have already collectively said that you prefer black men. White men aren't your type. And you have supported that because you have collectively said that lighter skinned men are not your type either. Lighter skinned black men, they're not black enough or man enough for you. So when you, when you, you can't expect us to believe that that is true and you want to swirl unless, of course, it's only about the money in the first place. And if it's only about the money in the first place, then you're bought and sold. If that's the case, you can't tell us you're independent. It's the inconsistencies. That's what makes it worse when you do it than when we do it. Yes, I just supported a double standard. However, it, I supported it with logic coming from your position in general when you start talking about swirling. You go from, uh, I mean, you go from pretty much, forget about me. I probably am not black enough. I, I accept the possibility. But forget about me. You pretty much go from someone like Dennis Sperling ain't black enough to you going to get you a white dude, a white dude, to Jason Pope. And he ain't even had to have money to dig out 700 of them. Now, what I wanted you to know is that when you start talking about the swirling, this is true. Many other races of men do look at you as being less attractive even when they don't hate you. Even if they don't think that you are inferior as a person, they still look at you as just being unattractive by virtue of your blackness. And that's enough. And they don't want any parts of you. That's all it takes for them. So they don't want. They look at you. And they say your nose is too wide, your lips are too full, that's too much melanin, your hair is too rough. The fact that you might have that big old booty and maybe some big breasts is maybe not. And yeah, I said it like that intentionally. The fact that you may have these things does not offset the fact that to them you have melanin. To them you may have a wider nose, bigger lips. They don't like that and they don't like the 4C hair. This, no, they are not okay with this stuff. This is not all right with them. Even if they don't hate you as a person, that's not all right. And they think that you should know this. They take for granted that you should know this and that you should not even be approaching them if you have these features. In their mind, just by virtue of having these features, you should know that you're not attractive enough to go in and try to get one of them to marry you. This is not what the black man feels. This is what the non-black man feels or the half black man that doesn't know he's black like the Arab. The Indian man, the Pakistani, the Afghan. This is what they feel. Your best bet when it comes to being viewed as attractive and desirable, naturally, your best bet is actually with black men. Be they African African-American, African-Brazilian, African-Colombian. They are the ones that are fine with your looks. I love your looks. I don't associate your looks with danger when we're talking about your natural phenotype. I begin to associate other things with danger. Actually, fake contact lenses, fake hair, sticking your tongue out and twerking in public. Things that denote you as specifically a Western black woman, specifically African-American or black British or black Canadian. These are the things when, when something identifies you specifically as that, then I begin to associate that with danger. And if I was single and available, I would see stuff like that and I would be impotent anyway. Because self-preservation comes first. This is what I wanted you to understand. 
You are not the non-black man's cup of tea in many cases. You just aren't. And the ones of them that do see you as being physically attractive usually look at the body as being physically attractive and they say you're good for sex, but why would someone marry you? There are others who actually want to marry you at times, like my student that joked about, I mean, he didn't want to, but he was just joking about marrying my daughter. However, the fact remains that when they want to do that, there are those of them who marry and then leave you even here, and there are those of them that want to marry you and they don't say what the reason is. It boils down to the fact that other people, don't even, when they don't even want to wipe you out, they still don't want you to outnumber everyone else. And in Afghanistan, they got a word for black people in general, men or women. It, it means the ugliest of the ugly. It has no direct translation and I can't pronounce it. But it means uglier than ugly. And they only use it for black people. In the Arab world, they don't even hate us. They call us slaves, though. They don't call you a slave because you're Nigerian or because you're Ugandan. It doesn't matter nationality. If you are recognizably black, they call you slave. And I argue with these niggas about it all the time. But when I say to them that we're going to put the same thing in reverse, they, they think that that's racism. This is an argument I've had ever since I've gotten into this country, and I've enjoyed ripping them and shredding them up every damn time. But you must understand that this is what it is. We have a better shot here. We black men with regular salaries have a better shot here of marrying a non-black Arab woman that is a citizen of this country than you have of finding a non-black man that is a citizen of this country to marry you. And I don't recommend that we take them as wives either. I'm not recommending it. I'm simply telling you that we have that option more easily than you got the option that you want. You cannot swirl as easily as we can. Now, you can rack up higher body counts. Oh, that's easy. You spread your legs, somebody's coming with a penis. And a lot of you do that. <laughs> that's a damn shame, but a lot of you will. You got that from the white woman. But when it comes down to actually swirling and getting what you want from the other gender, we still have an easier time. And I'm one of those that doesn't even recommend we do that. But I wanted you to understand that if you were talking this swirling stuff to get back at us for something when we really ain't done nothing to you to begin with, you still ain't going to win that competition either. You are mad because you can't get from us the lifestyle that you've seen white women on TV have from their men. That's all. That's what the resentment really comes down to. And if that's what it is for you individually, then you might as well go up to the mountaintop, throw your face up to the sky and argue with God about it because he created them crackers and created us. We were just born into this situation and our ancestors just were walking around one day and had a gun pointed at them and told to get on a boat. This isn't something we brought upon ourselves. This is not our fault. It's not your fault either, per se. Unless, of course, that book, Daughters of the Trade, is true. Even then, it wouldn't be your fault individually, but just like we can't blame you for the experience that traumatized us in the Americas, you also cannot blame us who are alive today. And if you want to get even with us, understand that, that that's already been made difficult. The brainwashing around the world has already made it difficult. We're seen as standards of masculinity. You are not seen as a standard of femininity. And that's unfortunately the case, not only for the black Western woman, the way that the black non-Western woman is viewed by these non-black people is almost the same way. I mean, not that they don't know how to act, but that their looks just aren't feminine enough. That's all. So they still face that. I'm all for black people being together. But like I've said, you, uh, you're not going to be able to, to just wander off to someone else because many of us are getting up and bouncing. You're going to have to either change who the F you are or stay by yourselves. These are the options that the rest of the male population of the world is going to give you. What they're saying to you is, and this is not something black men are telling you, what other men are saying to you is, you get you a black man or you stay by yourself because I don't want you. 
If I do want you, I'm not talking about individuals, I'm talking about the majority. What they're pretty much saying is that even if I did want you, I still wouldn't treat you equally to one of the women of my own background because they're not you. Because every other man around me and, my, and the women in my family don't see you as the same, so you still wouldn't get the same experience, even if you're my type. So you just, you just, these are the options you got. We're the ones that got options to go elsewhere. You don't. I'm not saying this out of pride. I'm saying this um, largely because I just want you to be realistic about it. That's all it is. Really, I'm saying this because I don't want the good ones among you to suffer anymore because they already got to suffer living among the worst ones among you that outnumber them. That's really the reason I'm saying what I'm saying. I think I've said enough. Thank you for being patient. Blackheart, uh, sun, blackout again, and uh, as alaikum and black male power.